going on YouTube? It's your boy Vince, and today we are back with another reaction. Today we're right into the terrifying last minutes of Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oi, mate. Look at the size of that crocodile. Look at the jaws on the beast. I'm gonna try to capture him. What was that? Steve? Whoa! But if you don't know who Steve Irwin is, which I think is crazy, he's basically a wildlife enthusiast. He swims with the fish, he, he hunts the crocodiles, he hangs with the snakes, he hangs with the pythons, he does all this crazy stuff and avoids danger. And I think the way he went out was a way nobody expected him to go out, you know what I'm saying? Like, we've seen him get out the sticky situations, we've seen him get bit by the snakes, we've seen him uh, dodge crocodile jaws, you know what I'm saying? And he went out like this. You know what I'm saying? It was like nobody expected it. I think it hit everybody kind of hard. It was like, dang. Is this real? Like, I don't know, man. So we're going to get into this video and see the terrifying last minutes of Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter. So let's get into it. Let's go. Be remembered for passion and enthusiasm. Conservation is my job, my life. My whole persona. This There'll is the never be another man like him. ...of one of the most beloved TV personalities and wildlife conservationists in Australia. Steve Irwin lived and breathed nature, and over the decades had cemented Crocky. himself as the face of wildlife documentaries across the world. But it was among the nature and wildlife he loved that he died in agonizing death, sending shockwaves around the world and devastating his family and fans. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the tragic story of Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. This Welcome was crazy. Affliction. It was September 4th, 2006. Another day at work for 44 year old Steve Irwin as he loaded his truck with supplies and equipment and set off for the Bat Reef near Port Douglas in northeastern Australia. He and his crew were preparing to shoot underwater footage for an upcoming documentary called Ocean's Deadliest for the Discovery Channel directed by John Stanton. For several days prior to the scheduled shoot- I love Steve Irwin. I love Steve Irwin. I, 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 English! Oh. I love Steve Irwin, but when the producers presented me with the idea of deadliest ocean animals, I would've been like, I'm good on that. Bruh. I'm not gonna lie, I'm already in the ocean. We don't really have much control of the area here. This is their land. We can't beat them in the water. We can't. Dude, that's what I'm just saying, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I would have did that. But, I mean, knowing Steve Irwin, you know he wasn't going to turn nothing down like that. They, uh, set up. Dude, John couldn't shake an eerie feeling that something bad was about to happen. He talked to his friends and producer requesting to call off the documentary. But the channel had already spent too much money on the project and could not afford further delays. But John Stanton still had an uneasy sensation that something would go wrong. How did he, he know? A will and reluctantly set off for the reef accompanied by Steve Irwin and his cameraman Justin Lyons. On the morning of September 4th, after arriving at the small town near Port Douglas, they boarded Steve Irwin's 75-foot research boat called the Croc 1 and sailed to the Bat Reef near the Great Barrier Reef on the eastern Australian coast. The area hosted various species of marine life, including sea turtles, dolphins, and whales, but the crew wanted to encounter a shark to film for this episode. What? So they donned their suits and put on their snorkels for a dive into the water. The sea was muddier than usual, and Steve and his cameraman Justin could not find a safe spot to look for a wandering shark. They decided it was best to call off the shoot for the day, as it was not the right time. But before they left, Steve Irwin spotted something that piqued his interest. It was not a shark, but a beautiful stingray. These marine animals could grow up to 5 meters or 16 feet in Dang! length, including a long piercing tail of which they had great control and agility. It was their primary weapon in the underwater ecosystem. But Steve Irwin was not irked by the creature. He had been doing this his entire life and knew that stingrays were not known to attack humans unless provoked or accidentally stomped on. Steve swam closer to the animal until it was right beneath him. He thought this was the perfect angle to film some shots for his daughter Bindi's upcoming wildlife children's show Oh, Bindi, no! Girl. He signaled his cameraman to swim down to him and start filming the animal. It was a serene sight. In the backdrop of the colorful ocean floor, stingrays had seldom been observed in such close proximity, 
as they would usually swim off or bury themselves in the sand upon encounters with humans. As Justin Lyons swam closer to Steve Irwin, they were blissfully ignorant of what was about to happen next. Steve Irwin was now only a few feet above the stingray, trying to work out the best angle to get a shot. But as he hovered closer, Steve, not the cameraman. He doesn't have a camera, bro. Cameraman, get over here. You don't want the camera, bro. What is he doing in here? Taking his time for, bro. Like, is it is 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 the reader just explaining this slow? Like, did it not really go down like this? Did it go down faster? Because what it sounds like is Steve Irwin was just over this over this um stingray for about twelve minutes, waiting on the cameraman, talking about, oh, we gotta get a good shot, dude. Come on, bro. Come on, cameraman. Come on. Get the right angle. Stingray suddenly lunged its long, sharp tail upwards, slicing through Steve Irwin's chest. Dude, that's crazy! He didn't crazy. immediately realize the magnitude of the attack, and a numbing sensation engulfed his body for a few seconds. In the commotion of the water before they tried to swim back up, Steve Irwin instructed Justin to keep the camera rolling. What?! Even in such dire circumstance, he wanted to get something out of the encounter. Justin Lyon, however, was painfully aware of what had just happened. There was a large two-inch hole in Steve's chest, and he was now bleeding profusely, turning the surrounding water red. Fearing that the blood could attract a nearby shark, Justin grabbed Steve Irwin and urged him to swim up to safety. When they resurfaced, the gravity of his injuries became immediately clear. It is hard. Steve Irwin was now in excruciating pain and losing blood fast. He screamed to Justin that his lungs had been punctured by the brutal attack, but the reality was far worse. It was his heart. The stingray's tail had cut into the side of Steve's heart, and the massive blood loss meant that he could lose his life in a few short minutes. Oh my goodness. Justin Lyons screamed to the crew on the boat that Steve Irwin was badly injured and needed help fast. The colleagues frantically threw him on an inflatable speedboat and quickly tried to get him to land. All the while they were with Steve, he displayed an indomitable spirit. He was losing consciousness, and as Justin and the crew forced weight on the wound to stop the bleeding, they called on him to stay alive for the sake of his family and his two children. Steve Irwin realized these were indeed his final moments, and calmly said he was going to die as they administered CPR. A few minutes later, he stopped moving. His eyes closed and his face turned blue. Steve Irwin, famed wildlife conservationist and beloved TV presenter, was dead. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. I knew I didn't like these, bro, but I thought if I watched it again, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was Steve Irwin. I thought I would like it. I, I don't know, bro. I just makes my heart itch, bro, and I can't scratch it. Dude. Oh my. So first of all, this is not how I thought the story went down. I'm glad I watched this. I'm glad I watched this because... I thought Stingray's electrocuted you. I thought, I thought he got tap tased in his heart and, 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 and he, he passed out in the water and drowned. I thought what? it was something like that. I, you know, I was only four at the time when this happened, but I I didn't know. I didn't know that. That is crazy. So Stingray's, they got a sword on the end of their tail and he just happened to just happen to hit his heart. Dude, what are the odds? Uh, okay. All right. It's a real question. Like, would it have been better if it hit his lung or or would he have died regardless? Like, like, cause I I know the heart. That's like, if that's gone, you up out of there. But like, I feel like a lung. It may be hard for him to breathe, but like, I feel like they could have kept him alive just for a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. So that's how far it gotta go through. A lot of chest, a lot of muscle, bro. I don't know. So he's just. Oh. He thinks I'm gonna take the banana. <laughs> I gave him the banana. And what do you want to be when you grow up? Goodbye, my daddy. Ah, oh, that is sad. Australian crocodile hunter Steve Irwin has died during a diving expedition near Port Douglas in Australia. He was a charismatic crocodile hunter who cheated death again and again. Terry Irwin has spoken of the loss of the man she called the love of her life. In a statement read by Steve's dad, she thanked the thousands who offered their condolences and she's decided his public memorial will be held where Steve felt most comfortable, the crocodile pen at Australia Zoo. Paramedics were called on the shore for a faint chance of resuscitating him, but it only took them a few seconds to declare that Steve Irwin had succumbed to his injuries and passed away. Even if he had been taken to a hospital, there was little chance that he could survive a strike straight into his heart. Oh my Stingray's goodness. razor-sharp tail had cut through Steve's chest, 
and he died among the animals and wildlife he had loved and cherished his entire life. The entire ordeal from the stab of the stingray's tail to the final moments that the paramedics were trying to revive Steve Irwin were captured on Justin Lyon's camera. But in respect for Steve's fighting spirit, he deleted and to it. save his family the pain of witnessing the scene of his death, Justin deleted the final copy of yep. the tape after a brief police investigation. That's a good man. The footage was never seen or released, but the sight of Steve's horrifying and painful final moments remain forever ingrained in the memory of the crew on board and the colleagues that loved and cherished him. His wife and children were on a trip in Tasmania when they heard the news of Steve Irwin's demise, and they were devastated and inconsolable at the tragic loss of their husband and father. His wife Terry and his children Bindi and Rob immediately traveled to the Australia Zoo, which Steve Irwin had run, and were met with love and consolation from thousands of adoring fans outside. Steve Irwin had earlier remarked that he would consider his final purpose in life fulfilled if he could pass on the torch of nature conservation to his children. And he did just with their that. Wish, Bindi and Rob became dedicated zookeepers and conservationists and worked to carry on Steve Irwin's legacy in honor of his tragic and untimely final affliction. He did just that, so he completed his goal. That's that's good. That's the well, at least some good came out of it, bro. His kids following his footsteps, bro, and they doing it exactly what he would want them to do. You know what I'm saying? They taking care of the zoo. They doing what they need to. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a few clips of his son actually reminds me just like Steve Irwin. You know what I'm saying? Reminds me just of him. You know what I'm saying? I was a little young to watch Steve Irwin, but I seen the old clips. I it wasn't like I was watching it live. I went back and watched it. So I don't know though, bro. Like it's just like dang, like. Stuff it's crazy to me how stuff could just go wrong so fast. It could just it could be good one moment then boom. And it's over with. You know what I'm saying? Like and then the crazy part is if he didn't see that stingray or he didn't like just having a peep and be like, oh what is this? Let me go investigate this. If he didn't happen to do that, he would be alive to this day because they were gonna leave the shoot. They were gonna leave because it, it was too dangerous, it was too muddy to find any sharks. They weren't even looking for stingray. That's the crazy part. Oh my goodness. I, I see. I learned something today because I didn't know stingray weren't stingrays. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought they sting you, like they zap you or something, like a jellyfish. But I was wrong. They just stab you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My heart is like hurting. I feel like I was stabbed. That's why I don't like watching this. It put me. It put me too much in like the like. It's too immersive. Like I'm in here like really living like what happened, bro. I don't like it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like it. So, I don't know, which, you know, which part y'all think was the craziest about this whole thing? Like, do y'all think it could have been prevented? Y'all think if it punctured like, his lung, could, could he have survived? Let me know in the comments. And y'all know, if y'all should too much, the comment button, like button, notify button, subscribe button, all the buttons, because guess what? <gasps> Crocky, mate, we gone.